Okay, so we're doing our garden pot soup today, and this is kind of a combination of just about anything you have from your garden or your refrigerator, what you have on hand. Um, I am starting the pot on medium with um, some bacon. This pot was given to us as a wedding gift, and it's probably our most, besides our silverware, our most used um, wedding gift, I think. It is amazing. I'll show you what pot it is in just a second. So it's an Emile Henry uh, from France, and it is just amazing. My husband's in the background. So we're gonna have the bacon on. This is just to start bacon. the. This is just to start the flavor profile and um, go ahead and get the. I'm gonna take this bacon out um, when it's done cooking, and then we'll add it back in the end. Um, I'm gonna start some of our base items, and just about every soup I make, I use a carrot and onion and celery. I think I grabbed too much carrot. I'm not gonna use my funky leg, but isn't he cute? angle with the tripods it's kind of funny they don't have to be super small if you have a few big pieces you can split them in half but other than that I kind of just let them beam and again we're using whatever is handy um, from the refrigerator and so the carrots the onions and the celery are the staples and I get those going as soon as the bacon is done. And then I kind of add whatever else. Sometimes if I don't have fresh celery or carrot or onion, I'll use my dehydrated ones and add them in. I'm gonna flip this bacon over. So if you don't want to use bacon, you can use some avocado oil or some olive oil and let it uh, just use that for your veggies. Okay, so I'm going to grab these carrots and stick them in a bowl so they're out of the way. Okay, next up is the celery. I'm not worried how big or small. We like our soups kind of chunkier. So we'll that add that into the bowl. And then if you wanted to, you could save the peels to the onions and keep them in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. I have no freezer space right this moment, so I'm not going to be doing that. But you could do that and save them until you boil down a turkey, a whole turkey or a, um, the bones to a whole turkey or chicken. Again, you can do whatever size on these you want to. We like it kind of chunky. Okay. 
I love the smell of bacon, you guys. It smells so good. I actually don't like eating bacon by itself, but I like adding it to foods all the time. And um, soups is one of my favorite ways to have it, but I do really like the smell of it. Okay, the next item I'm going to start chopping up. This is almost ready. Cooking it down pretty crispy. But I'm going to do this bell pepper. I just used this on our breakfast. So again, not super small chunks, but get that chopped up. I'm going to add that in. We like orange or red or yellow most of the time. Um, you can do green if you want to. I just don't that often. Unless I'm growing and that's like all that's available in the garden. Right now I don't have a whole lot in the garden uh, that's producing yet. So we are still using store-bought. bacon is just about ready to pull out of that pot. Honey, do you want to just eat the bacon or do you want me to add it back in afterwards? It's up to you. I just want the flavor right here or the way it is. Okay, so grab that bacon out of there. That pan is super hot and ready to go. So I'm going to add in the bowl that has the celery, onions, carrots, and bell pepper. And get that going in there. Really move it around. Try to, as it starts to cook down a little bit. I really want to try to get up any of the burnt pieces that stuck to the bottom of the pot from the bacon and really get this softened up a little bit. Not a ton, just a little bit. Get the aromatics going. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do this red bell pepper. I don't think I'm going to use the whole thing right now. Just going to pull out this middle portion. I'm only going to use half of this, so it's about a whole bell pepper total that we're using. And you can use whatever type of pepper that you want to. Um, we use habanadas. Um, I am going to add in some frozen jalapeno right now. Give that a stir again. Wipe off my hand. So I have some jalapenos that were from our garden from last year that I froze. So I'm going to pull out about one jalapeno's worth and pop it in there. Okay. So grab out a couple pieces, pop that in. Let that start cooking down. And if you do too hot for some reason, again, I'm super I'm getting a little bit better after adding jalapenos to my soups, but I'm a super lightweight when it comes to spice. So what you can do is add a little extra lemon and it will mild, will tone down that spice for you. And I have this lemon salt that I'm going to put in right now. Just a little bit of it to get it 
to help these items get their juices out. Actually, I'm probably going to do a tablespoon. So a tablespoon, it has lemon zest in it and it's sea salt. But it's going to help everything release their juices. Okay, get that stirred up. Will I get some of these other veggies ready? This looks so good. All right, so I had some zucchini on hand, so I'm going to go ahead and chop that up, and we're going to add this to the soup. Again, I don't always have squash on hand, so it's not always added. My daughter doesn't like these type of soups, so I don't have to worry about putting zucchini in it because she is not a fan of zucchini. And at this point, as I chop everything up, I'm just going to keep adding it to the pot and let it keep building those flavors. My husband and I have been eating a ton of these soups lately, and I get asked a lot what I put in them, and it changes every single time. There is not one soup that has been exactly identical from the one before it. Um, I actually made a video, and I didn't have my tripod that the camera's on right now, and you end up seeing only my back, and so I ended up not posting that one, and I'm re-recording, but it's funny because... It was a completely different soup. It had some of the same ingredients, but it was still totally different. So every time you get a similar, but completely different soup. Okay, this is a rutabaga. Um, if you've never cooked with a rutabaga, I highly suggest it. This is a great way to have them. Um, I had never really paid attention, or I don't remember ever hearing about a rutabaga before until I was watching some garden videos and some people were growing them and I'm like oh I might want to grow that if it's kind of like a turnip or um, a great potato substitute or whatever so I went ahead and I went to the store and bought some before I grow something I like to know if I'm gonna enjoy it after I put all that time into it and I actually really like them so I've been buying them and I will be growing them this fall stuff over. They are a little hard to cut through, so you want to be super careful. Um, maybe I'll do this way. I'm going to see how hard, depending on how big your rutabaga is, will depend on where you kind of want to cut it. It kind of has a, it reminds me of celery with kind of like a hint of radish, but it doesn't have any of the spice that a radish has. This pot's getting full already. In there this is a great way to use up that last little bit of produce of whatever type that you have like I had some broccoli left so that's why I'm throwing it in I have some cauliflower I could have thrown in a lot of times I'll do cauliflower and I'm just gonna keep the broccoli pretty chunky I've already washed this and I just really want the florets mainly Give this a stir. Get some of those 
veggies moved around and turned. Gives me an idea of how much room I have left to work with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. Move the stuff. So at this point, I'm going to add some more of the seasonings. Um, and actually, before I do that, I will do the kale. Washed and ready to use. Let's do a sneak peek in here. Uh, soups is one of the ways we like to eat kale. So sometimes we'll do spinach, sometimes we'll do kale. Um, sometimes we will use uh, the mustard. I grow a lot of the mustard. That one doesn't look so great. Um, a lot of the mustard in the garden during this time of year. And um, so we'll add that to the soup just to add a pop of color and nutrients but boiling it down this way really does um, help to break down the kale and make it more palatable okay the last thing that we're going to add and i'm not going to wash them before i do the broth and the seasonings is black eyed peas we use black eyed peas with everything um, you can soak them if you want to i boil the soup down long enough that until these are soft that's how i know when it's done so I'm just going to throw in a little bit of this. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing. I changed my mind. If I can find it. I have a tiny bit of forbidden rice left. So I'm going to throw in some of this forbidden rice and it's really going to change the color of the soup a little bit and it kind of has like a nutty texture to it okay so what I'm going to do at this point is bring you guys over so you can see all right, so there is the pot of soup and all the yumminess that's going on in here. You can see underneath the kale, all the goodness down there. So at this point, what I'm gonna do, because this needs to cook down, is I'm gonna add in some chicken broth and I have low sodium um, chicken broth. And I do that because I end up adding like my flavored salts and so forth. Get that chicken broth in there. And I have a lot of stuff in here. So I'm all, one almost does it. Almost. It really is super close to being enough but I kind of want more broth in it sometimes I err on the side of putting too much goodness in it and not enough broth so I'm going to open another broth and then I'll store the rest of this broth in the refrigerator for the next one And this soup will last us a few days. I just store the leftovers in mason jars in the fridge and um, heat it up. Okay. So now we're gonna add some more seasoning to this and then we'll put the lid on it and let this whole thing cook down and we'll check back in when it is ready. So I am going to do um, a little bit more salt. And I'm going to try some Celtic Grey sea salt today in it. 
just a little bit more. And then I'm going to add in some pepper. Junior, with chicken broth, what do you feel like for your seasonings today? I need to put garlic in there. That's what I'm missing. Um, basil, parsley, oregano, thyme. Basil. There's basil. Basil and thyme is what you want. And then because I forgot to chop up garlic and add it to this, which I usually always do, I do have some minced garlic in the fridge that I will go ahead and add. I am gonna add a touch of parsley because I just feel like that today. We usually do oregano when it is um, beef. We really like that with the beef. Okay, so I'm gonna add in a big old tablespoon of garlic into here as well. How can I forget the garlic? We love the garlic. So get all that seasoning in there, really mix it around. And this delicious goodness is now going to cook down for an hour and a half to two hours. And we're gonna do that with the lid on and then we'll see you back here when it's done. Okay, so we are checking back in and our soup is done. Everything's cooked down really well. The soup didn't change colors a ton from that forbidden rice. But the beans, if you pick up the bean, oh, it's hot, 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 hot. It's soft in the hand, falls apart. Mm. Super yummy. We eat this just the way it is. You can always serve it with, um, we've done it with tortillas. You can also serve it with biscuits. Um, lots of yumminess. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit closer. Mm. Does not look good. Lots and lots of veggies, a great way to take care of a little harvest or um, your leftovers in the fridge before your produce goes bad. I hope you guys try to make this and that you enjoy it. Make sure that you like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you are notified when um, we have new videos come out. I try to do a recipe every Friday. So make sure you stay tuned. Thank you for watching.